My name is Mark Schottel and this is an Hackitech Playground. In this episode, we will talk about the dark side of Kubernetes and microservices. We will talk about how to test them and how to evaluate the security of microservices running on Kubernetes. If you like my channel, if you like my videos, subscribe. I will give you exactly three tips how to evaluate security of Kubernetes cluster bots and deployments. First one is a Kubescan, which is based on similar system like Common Vulnerability Scoring System, but in this case it is Kubernetes Configuration Scoring System, which is expandable or extensible system, open source, available on GitHub. So let's check our first tip. Kubescan is a tool from Octarine, which provides risk assessment security tool or risk assessment configuration tool for Kubernetes services. You can run it on any cluster and it provides also the GUI for the risk or for the configuration assessment. If you look, it's very easy to, to, to download it because it's in the GitHub. It's Kubernetes common configuration scoring system, which is behind this service. It's pretty, pretty straightforward to help you to evaluate the configuration level or maturity of your Kubernetes cluster and applications. If you want to check the rules, you can basically access the code because it's fully open sourced and everyone has access to it. It's very easy start with Kubescan. So let's check how to do that. Go to a terminal and I hope that you have already installed your kubectl. You need to run Kubescan on your cluster. So kubectl apply minus F and then the link to your Kubescan YAML will help you to deploy the Kubescan service. As you see, the namespace config map service account is created. And then we need to continue with kubectl port forwarding enablement. So kubectl port forward on specific namespace. In our, ca in our case, it will be namespace kubescan just wait for it kubescan svc as a service and then the name of the service which is the ui for kubescan and basically execute the port 8080 to 80 and i will change it from the default one to 8081 okay and you see the forwarding is enabled on the localhost port 8081 to 8080, which help us to enable Kubescan GUI. GUI is pretty simple. I have few problems with that. It's mainly the recommendation engine is a little bit poor, but it gives you full risk assessment list or list of the risks available for your cluster. If you click on include system namespaces, you will get the namespace information or the risks related to the namespace. If you see there is a Kube proxy and storage provision as additional from the Kube system namespace, there is a Kubescan uh, deployment running on the, under the Kubescan namespace. The resource dark side minikute in the namespace default, which is deployment, is having medium risk. Why it is that? You see the descriptions of the risk. Some of them are really low, like workflow, workload uh, allows a privilege escalation. You can also see lots of similarities with common vulnerability scoring system, like integrity, confidentiality, and availability impacts, and exploitability attack vector and scope. It assess the risk from all of these, or the vulnerability from all of these aspects. And then there's a high level description of the vulnerability itself. You can show more or show less, depend if you need to, if you need to just list or if you want to have a details. Here, you can see that the processes in a container are running as a root and they may be able to escape the container and perform malicious action at the host level. So basically that's a pretty, pretty clear description of the integrity impact. 
then the confidentiality back in this case is pretty high. And that's that's basically it, what you need to know from at least evaluating the vulnerability. What I a little bit missed on this tool is including in the description the remediation steps that you should take. This is something what you need to make from uh, what you need to take from other source. Here, the remediation is uh, more like a generic description. Here in the this high risk impact vulnerability, show more uh, gives you a listening port isn't configured. What it means when there is no listening port, workload with local vulnerabilities are less likely to be exploited. Very interesting. And as you see in all the three main security aspects, it's, it's the high risk in the namespace Kube system for storage provisional, which is pot. You know, the previous one was a deployment. In this case, we are talking about the pot. Anytime you find new vulnerability, you are free to refresh it and you will get a new list of the vulnerabilities. Uh, interesting is also that it can give you information about the ARP spoofing and similar man in the middle attacks based on the wrong configuration. In this case, it's a natural capability. Second tool that I will show you today is Kube Hunter. You will hunt for vulnerabilities. It allows you to have active and passive scanning, which in distinguished man, it's very easy. Passive scanning is checking the version, checking the proxy, checking the configuration. So no active communication. Active one can do, for example, ARP spoofing or DNS spoofing, and it can a little bit modify your Kubernetes. Let's go to check what, how it works. Next tool that we'll talk about is Kube Hunter. Kube Hunter basically helps you to discover security weaknesses in your Kubernetes cluster. Do not test with Kube Hunter any cluster which you do not own. It's only for your own purposes. It provides also the Docker-based Kube Hunter interface UI online based on the Docker token that you can use. So basically you can have nice GUI or nice looking list of the vulnerabilities, not only the one that I will show you from the command line. They also have the online database of the vulnerabilities and the description of what is the difference between the active and passive hunting they are offering and how to basically run Kube Hunter from the Docker. You see all the articles or all the parts of the vulnerability assessment of this tool. If you are interested in the detail, you can go online and check, for example, the pod with mount to var log and check what is the problem, what is the issue description, what is the remediation and recommendation for that. And also the external references for common vulnerability enumeration and common weaknesses enumeration. Kube Hunter is offering different hunting options, passive and active. To active one, we can counter, for example, Azure SPN Hunter, ARP Spoof Hunter, DNS Spoof Hunter, and HTCD Removed Access. On other side, the passive hunting offer Kubala Discovery, Port Scanning, Proxy Discovery, Dashboard Hunting, and Access to the Secrets. Next part is a command line interface. I will show you how to work with your command line. Kubectl get pods is showing the pods that I'm actually now running on my cluster. There's a dark side on front end and Redis databases. And I will show you also the get deployments. So you see which deployments are available. I installed the Kube Hunter, which is providing three features or three main options. It's remote scanning, interface scanning, and IP range scanning. With two, it scans the subnets on all the local host, in, local host interfaces. So it takes some time to discover all the local host interfaces. It shows you nodes, the node master and the detected services. You see that there is a Kube API and HTCD and the description of the service itself. This is mainly the passive scanning. So it is not giving you too much information about the vulnerable parts of your system. Kube Hunter with uh, with addition, additional setup with list or with the with the list will give you the complete list 
of the passive and active hunters. For example, the service discovery, HTCD service discovery, Kubelet service ports number, and, and the number of the, the version, for example, port capabilities hunter. And also it can give you the list of the active scanning uh, features. And you see that there are lots of lots of different tools helping you to hunt for the vulnerabilities. For example, proxy hunting. Uh, with a Kube Hunter list and active, it should give you, ah, okay, maybe I made a mistake here. It should, it should give you a complete list of the active scanning parts for the Kube Hunter. For example, Kubelet Container Log Hunter. Azure SPN Hunter, very interesting for the cloud deployments. And DNS spoofing, you can also check the possibility of malicious bot to compromise the DNS request or uh, ARP spoofing. So you can check the ARP spoof attack from within a pod. Very interesting stuff. Really interesting if you are into the hacking and if you are like in some time on the cybersecurity, you will know what is that. And it's something that you want to discover in your production workload. We'll try different choice uh, with uh, with active scanning, but uh, let's let's play a bit. So if I will choose the second again, if I, to see the difference, the second option interface scanning, it should give us the same results as we saw before. So Kube Hunter modules it, again, it gives you the the location of the nodes, the detected services, all the passive scanning results. If you want to extend the results, you need to work a little bit on your command line skills. We need to call a specific, we, we, can, we need to extend our test to the active scanning and we can also specify the range, the IP that we want to scan. If you, if you have like a remote host, if you are using AWS, uh, EKS system, so you can re re remotely scan basically your de cloud deployment. So let's play a bit with, with some active scanning. It, uh, it, it takes some time. Uh, so Kube, uh, Kube Hunter, sorry, I just want to say Kube Scan, but this is a previous tool, remote. So we can specify the remote domain or DNS name. Uh, and I will use uh, my localhost address to, for simplicity and active. It, it will find lots of new vulnerabilities like proxy is exposed, KS version is disclosed, or the Kubernetes dashboard is available for, for, for public, and that, that can be serious a problem. So as addition to the detected services, you see also the list of the vulnerabilities identified and also the ID from the vulnerability system and the category, if it is remote code execution, information disclosure, and the evidence from where it takes the information about the target vulnerability and also the vulnerability name and the description. Really good, really simple, and also really fast. In production workload, when you have highly available pods and bigger deployments, it can take more time, so please don't, don't freak out. Kube Hunter report JSON can give you a report in the specified output. You can also detach it to the HTML page to make it more nicer. But in this case, just for an example, you can specify different outputs with report JSON. It should give us back the JSON output with all the results. As you see here, here it is done. In the output, in the, in the standard output in the command line, we are getting JSON. Third tool and the last one, not last from available on the market, but the last one from our video is a Chef Inspect. Chef Inspect is a fantastic tool for security as a code and testing your configuration of Kubernetes. So if you are interested, let's continue our journey to the third tip. Next, absolutely epic animal for testing to Kubernetes services as Chef Inspect. It has more usages. This is mainly security as a code or compliance as a code. We will not talk about that today. You can choose from multiple versions from the Red Hat, different Amazon Linux, Windows. Choose what you like and where you work. Let's go to the real operating system, Ubuntu, and use the Inspect to, to test our Kubernetes deployment. I just don't have any here. It's just for showcasing you how it works. If the inspect is on your platform, you should be able to get the version information. With inspect help, you get 
the commands available for you. There is a bunch of different setup that you can use. You can archive your scan, you can, you can detect the operating system, you can check uh, different vulnerabilities, different sys benchmarking tools. You can have shell capability with the interactive debugging shell. And you can execute different profiles with the controls that you want to check. These profiles, the um, control, controls in the profile are like a security asset code. So as I say, this is for another day, a different topic. So let's play a bit with this tool. Inspect, detect, should give you information about the operating system. Ubuntu, Debian, Linux, uh, and the release and also the architecture of the OS. It's so it should give you lots of details really fast. Yeah, I know that you can do it with the different commands, but this tool is mainly for the testing the security. With NSPEC, EXEC, and on the GitHub, I have some already prepared sys Kubernetes benchmark. With executing this profile, from the DevSecOps tools, uh, I didn't do that. It's just publicly available for everyone. You will fetch the profile and run the test. As you see that 122 was skipped because I'm not running any cluster here, but it gives you exactly the sys benchmark checks. If you fulfill all the requirements for Center for Internet Security, if you ensure the encryption providers are well well configured, if you, for example, esp uh, exp ensure that your API server post specification file permission is correct as it should be. You can also basically check different or specific controls that you are interested in for like a regressive regression testing. So you can use a controls parameter to define which controls are you interested in and in also in which version or the space score that everything can be covered. So for example, in this case, this Kubernetes benchmark and then definition of the of the control that you want to use, it will be one dot one dot one. There's no additional dot. <laughs> usually, and then I can I can choose additional control that I'm interested in. So this Kubernetes benchmark again, and again, the number of the control that you are interested in to, to test. In our case, it will be 1.1.3, and it I will execute the test, and it should give you all the necessary input just for these two controls. You see, output is different, I just get 1.1.1 and 1.1.3 from the CIS Kubernetes benchmark. Only two controls well checked and the test is much faster than anything else. So you can basically also decrease the time of the test execution for your inspec. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope that you enjoy the content. I hope that you enjoy my tips. If yes, like it subscribe or comment with your favorite tool and I will look forward for you in next videos. Thank you so much.